special treat for you. Uh, the lovely Neil Hermes, our bird guru, is uh, actually in the building with us. Hi, Neil. Hi, Tatiana. How Hello, are you going? I'm good. Great to be in the studio. Yeah, it's really, really good to be here. Um, now we've got some we've got some stories to cover, but we've also got um, a a couple of bird calls. Should we play them back we to have, back, or what do yeah, you think? Yeah, back to back. Two two set, two different bird calls. All right, let's listen to the first one. <laughs> Now that's call one. Okay. And this is call two. Hang on. Oh, hang on. That's just finishing call one. Uh, call one, I should say. And then the second one is this one. Now that's call two. Now they're very similar, but they are two different species of birds. Hmm. So you have to name both species today, Tatiana. Oh, wow. I love, look, when you come in, you don't muck around, do oh, you? No, no, we do up the ante today. Oh, that oh, that is so familiar. That's so near my house. Whatever that is, yeah, that one. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Okay. So if you have a um, if you have a guess, six two double five twelve oh six, and extra bragging rights, if you can name both, that would be very impressive. Now, Neil, um, you very kindly brought me in a copy of your book, um, because we're talking about um, I mentioned to you that my son um loves bird watching. Not that he's moved from his video games for a while to be honest with you look you have to get him away from the video games and out bird watching so i hope he yep. helps, I hope he enjoys this book this is my book the birds of canberra and the high country mm -hmm. um how old is your son he's 14 14 look any age between you know eight nine ten through 12 14 15 the thing is just get the kids outside and ask them what birds they know because in fact all children know lots of birds they don't mm. know it and in fact i was out with a group of school children only this week and i asked them all whether they were bird watchers and they all said no mm. but between them they could name 30 species of birds so oh, wow. all young people are bird watchers they just need to have their eyes opened and pointed in the right direction a bit i know it's a challenge but you know let's get them yeah. out on a day like today in canberra in uh, autumn what a wonderful day to get out that's fantastic. And, yeah, look, just getting them away from the screens and having a bit of a purpose to, to be outside when they're going for a bushwalk or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the tricks you can do is say, how many different species can we see on this walk today? Now, you've ah, probably seen... yes. You might, and make it a game, you know, how many different ones, and maybe you see 10 or 20. Yeah. I might get you a bit closer to Sorry, that microphone yes. there. No um, problem. Neil, so we can hear your dulcet tones. Uh, Ron from Charnwood is on the line and wants to guess. Hi, Ron. Hey, good morning or thereabouts. Uh, ravens and crows. Look, you've... Oof. Sort of, look, I'm going to have to give you some points for that, uh, Ron. <laughs> um, ravens and crows is a sort of good overall description, but there are two species um, that we played the calls of this morning. Um, and, and look, why don't we cut to the chase with this? Um, both of the species I played were ravens. And in fact, in Canberra, we have no crows at all. Um, we only have ravens, and the calls ah. I play today are the two species of ravens that we have in Canberra. Uh, the first one uh, is the Australian raven, which is the bit, slightly bigger one, and the second was the little raven. And the difference is just a subtle difference of uh, length of tone. The, the Australian raven has a sort of longer tone, and the little raven has a smaller tone. Now, if you're in other parts of Australia, you get crows, but in Canberra, we just have these two. There you go. Did you know that, Ron? No, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that about the crows either. There you go. No, I, I, yeah, I thought one one hangs. Yeah, one's a bigger one, and he's mean. And, oh uh, no. Yeah, it's the one that likes sheep. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the, 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 they are uh, the, the slightly larger one. The Australian raven uh, will uh, eat carrion. It will eat uh, dead or even dying uh, animals. Um, and the other one, the little raven, is a flocking bird, and it tends to mainly eat insects. So, but look, they're very difficult to tell. And I mean, you know, the word crow is often used to describe them um, anywhere in Australia. But strictly speaking, we only have two species in Canberra, and they are both ravens, and I've just played the two calls, and we'll play them a little later again, just to just to recap on just them. Just to recap, Ron, well done. Thanks, Ron. Well done. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Um, so there you go. So we, we've already um, we've already named it, but um, but we're giving people some you know ideas on you know ravens versus crows. I know it's a murder of crows. Do you know what the collective noun is for Look, ravens? I don't know what it is for ravens. I apologise. You're the bird guru, I know, Neil. How I'm, dare. Not the, I'm not the, the, English, <laughs> the collective noun. The collective guru. noun expert who's good at <laughs> trivial pursuit at at, uh, at uh, these trivial pursuit nights. No, I don't do that. Oh, I'm terrible on trivia night. I'm good at the music questions, but if it's sport or anything else, hopeless. Yeah, well. 
collective now. I mean, there's a collective nouns for birds that have never been used, I think, but they always brought out. As, oh, uh, some of them are really unusual, like yeah. a parliament of owls. That's yeah, that's, that's a, a fave. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good one. It's a good question, but it's yeah. never used. Yes, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. Now, um, getting back to our, our birdie stories, I love this one about bird nests because they're so fascinating. And you remember when you were little or even now, if you ever come across one, mm. they're just so fascinating and amazing and, and intricate and very symmetrical. And, and there's new um, experiments hinting at why they're so sturdy. What, what yeah, happens look, there? Yeah, we take them to, for granted. You see a bird's nest and you know, there's a bird's nest, but it's yeah. just a pile of sticks. Yeah. And yet they a bird can pick up a stick and can work out how it will fit with other ones and put them together. And when you really wow, think about it. Wow, that's very industrious. Well, when, when you think about it, it's, uh, it, it's a bit... It's a bit like that skill about picking up a piece of furniture and knowing it'll go through a doorway or not. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> some people don't. Well, some yeah. people don't. It's, it's, people it's, a, it's a spatial thing that birds have about a stick that they can put together. And, in fact, they're doing computer modelling to see if they can work out what it is that m- means that you can fit things together. This is very important in engineering terms to be able to work out some of this stuff. Yeah. So um, birds have this amazing skill, mm-hmm. uh, and we're only just starting to unpick, if you excuse the pun, um, <laughs> how they actually put... Uh, Put the nest together and actually make it last for, for sometimes decades. These these nests and can, big ones, so eagle nests, you know, can take you know a huge amount of weight in them. But they're just a pile of sticks. Yeah. Ama- amazing research that's being done on on the the building of bird nests. And how do they stay in the tree? I yeah, guess exactly. sometimes they fall out. But well, how sometimes they-, they do. And you've only got two or three forks in the tree, you know, so that the sticks, the the first three or four sticks when they're put in, how do they stay there? So birds are. It is a, it is an amazing skill, and we're only just starting to recognise what a what a a skill it is to recognise how these sticks can be put together mm. so that they will actually hold the weight and stay stay together. And as I say, the, the, it's, it's testing computer modelling to work out how it all happens. That's fantastic. If you've got a question for Neil, there's a bird that you're confused about, you want to know some more info, 6255 is our number. Now, look, this seems like a very obvious question because I thought it had to do with mating. I'm not sure. Why do birds sing in spring is our next story. Well, it is a sort of obvious question, I suppose. And every spring, I mean, when we read our inter- national newspapers this time of the year the northern papers and and magazines are full of stories about spring because of course they're going into spring and it's uh and and they've got all the spring birds calling um at the moment in Mm. in the uk and in europe and in north america uh why do they sing in spring well it's 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 largely about setting a territory it's largely about declaring um uh you know the possession of a of a of a resource uh, for a male, it'll be you know attracting females into a space. Mm-hmm. It's about keeping other uh, birds away from that space. There's a whole range of reasons, but you know, we do we do understand a lot about why bird spring is now you know sing in spring, and of course it's uh, it's a topical matter if you happen to be in springtime in the northern northern hemisphere, as many of our uh, journalists at this time of the year tend to be. Absolutely. And uh, Calgary has voted on its official bird. I love this story. I think this is fantastic. Calgary in uh, Alberta in Canada, they had a competition right through April to decide on the on the, on a city bird, a bird for their city. Would they not and, have had one already? Well, um, we have state birds in Australia. Okay. I don't think we have city birds in Australia. We wouldn't have one. We don't have one for Canberra. Well, we have a, an ACT bird, oh. which is the gang gang. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I suppose we have a city bird and a state bird simultaneously. Okay, yeah. But in other parts of the world, they have a city bird. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, Calgary decided to have a competition. Uh, it caused more social media media contact than the Olympics, this thing in, in Calgary, uh, which just shows you how topic will be. They had five birds that they had selected uh, for the for the residents of Calgary to vote on. Uh, the blue jay, uh, a flicker, which is a type of woodpecker, a nuthatch, their famous magpie, which is unrelated to ours, and a tiny bird called a chickadee. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, the chickadee came home with the bacon. It got almost half of the votes of 34,000 votes Aww, in Calgary. That's and actually the, very sweet because that was my mum's pet name for me when I was chickadee. little. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and the magpie, which everyone thought would probably get in, only got about a quarter of the votes. Um, but the chickadee gets its name from the call it makes. So it mm. says chickadee, chickadee. And the cute thing in the uh, 
uh, story, of course, is they interview a, a chickadee to find out what they think about the fact that oh, they're now... Oh, and? And he said, what do you think? He said, chickadee. Oh, so there you go. All very cute. A very cute, cute story. I love the story. But it, it does show how these... Um, these uh, sort of popular symbols of, of places uh, can create a lot of interest. So, you know, uh, Gang Gang is our bird in the ACT. Yeah. Um, but chickadees are the, now the bird of Calgary in the U- in Canada. That's very cute. You know how you hear about octopuses and, like, dugongs and things, like picking the election result? Yeah, yeah. Has that been has that happened with birds? Because they I, seem to be very intelligent. They should know. Yeah, well, perhaps we should get the ravens and the little ravens in to, to do some selection for us because they're very bright birds. Yes. Um, no, I haven't heard of an election picked by a bird anywhere but no doubt someone can tell us if, it, if, if it's happened. Oh, and look let's let's revisit those bird calls in case you weren't sure. So here's the Australian raven. Very long and drawn out. Yeah, again I thought that was a crow. So there you go. And that's drawn out at the very end. Yep. And then the little raven. Much more ah much more yappy <laughs> sort of sound. Yes. And they tend to be a flocking bird. So we get both of those in Canberra. If you see them, listen if you can hear the call. Long drawn out, Australian raven. I love how you got the bit at the end. Yeah. And then... And, and <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. I love it. Neil, yeah. are you doing any bird watching this weekend? I always um, love to hear about your adventures. I, I will be doing a little bit of bird watching tomorrow, yes. I, okay. um, I'll be out, hopefully this weather holds, and uh, we can get out and um, and have a bit of uh, bit of sunshine. Fantastic. Neil, it's been such a pleasure to have you in the studio. It's been great, Tatiana, finally Thank to be you. in here with I you. Know. I know. You're a real person. You're not just a disembodied voice on the phone. No. <laughs> Neil, uh, thank you so much. We'll catch you next weekend. Yep. Thanks very much, Tatiana. Ciao. Thank you so much.